How you doing folks? My name is Patrick. Now Dear Old Dad has walked you through the basics of old time banjo. And what that means is by now you can do the bump ditty. You can make a chord. Maybe more than one chord, right? Even play a song like Violin Cabbage Down. The question is, where do I go next? Good question. The great thing about old time banjo is there are no rules. I mean, if you take an instrument and keep in mind that no one really knows where the banjo came from, there's all kinds of theories and stories. There's reports of the banjo in America as far back as the, as the earliest settlers in the, in the 16 and early 1700s who wrote down, they saw the slaves in the, on the different farms and plantations playing the banzo. So if, if there isn't any rules, where do you go? Anywhere you want. What we're going to do in this section of the tape is give you some concepts, some ideas about how certain things work on the banjo and give you the freedom to explore it on your own. Because this is a lot of fun. There's a lot of great things you can do with a few chords and a five string banjo. And one of the first things I want to cover here is a little bit of music theory. When I say music theory, don't get all, oh no, oh no, because actually reading music isn't that big a deal. And we're not going to go into that part of it anyway. But this is just the idea of what makes music work. And with the engine of music, what makes music go is the rhythm. And in old time banjo, we break up the measure. Um, a measure is, if you look at a piece, piece of sheet music, you'll see two bars going this way with the notes in between them and two more bars with the notes in between them. That space is called a measure. And in 4-4 four, four time, what that means is there's four beats between those two lines, that measure. Now, what's a beat? Well, if you think of it as a note, a sound, a, a tone. So when you're playing the banjo, if we were just doing four beats per measure, we could do violin cabbage down one string. When up on a mountain, give my horn a blow. For every measure, Now that measure, that breakup of the measure, it's kind of boring. You've got the same note over and over and over again. And at some point, a long time ago, somebody had the idea with, wait, if it's four beats per measure, if it equals one, we can break up those fractions. It's like if you take a dollar bill, make it four quarters, well, how many coins does it take to make a quarter? How many pennies does it take to make a dime? You can break up the, the measures that way. And what I mean is, let's take um, Bomb Cabbage Down again. If we were just singing Bomb Cabbage Down, strumming a chord in 4-4 four, four time, and not doing anything else, we would just do every measure, strum the chord four times. When up on a mountain to give my horn a blow, thought I heard my true love say. doing there is one, two, three, four. There's no thumb, there's nothing involved, it's just a strum. It's boring, isn't it? Well, the bump ditty breaks up that, that strum from just four strums to a quarter note and two eighth notes. And what that gives you is that, that sound. One, two, and one, two, and and when you so just, just pick a string and do Bob Cabbage Down, all of a sudden it gets a little bit more interesting. You already know this one. Now that's still pretty neat, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't make you crazy. You want to run around and dance or, or, or have a good time. So you can break up that measure even more. And what that means is, is taking any of those single notes and cutting them in half or stretching them out or 
pulling them around a little bit. And how do you do that? Well, dear old dad told you about the hammer on, the pull off, the slide. I'm going to show you about the bend. And what those little extras do is sweeten up the music. It gives you a flavor. You can take a simple song like Violin Cabbage Down, and if you throw in some hammer ons and pull offs, break up that measure. And what that does is instead of just leaving that note or a quarter note, you're cutting it in half. And it's that breaking up of the measure. It's the taking the very simple outline of these songs. All these folk songs you're going to be playing throughout your banjo playing career are very, very simple little tunes. Even the most exotic fiddle tune can be plunked out as a very simple mel melody. Where it gets creative is you, the musician, the artist, taking that basic outline and finding ways to change things but still keep the song the song so you can recognize it, but adding your voice. Because you don't say, I will now play Cripple Creek for you. You don't play it that way. It's not Girls on Cripple Creek, bow half grown. The song has punch to it. It's Girls on Cripple Creek, bow half grown. You phrase it the way you talk, and that makes the banjo or any instrument very vocal. It gives it power and punch just by simply breaking up those measures. So where we just got a note, you can add those tones. That's how you break up the measure. Another idea about breaking up the measure you're going to, we're going to talk about here, and some people make a really big deal about this, but this is a really simple thing. There's times where if you don't play anything at all, but you keep that space equaling a beat, it actually counts as music. You know, after, after all, isn't music the space between the notes? So there's times where if you're playing a fast fiddle tune or you want to add a accent to the to your voice to the singer's voice or instead of doing this you, you're not playing that strum but you're leaving the space in to count as the strum and that's the great thing. You can just play one note, and if you're filling out the rest of that 4-4 measure with empty space, but it's the right empty space, you're counting it. And when you come back for the next note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it works. So you can actually make music sometimes by not doing anything. That's the way you can break up the measure. As long as you're in the timing, whatever you do is going to work. Now we were talking about adding those notes to the measure. I know what everybody's saying, but what about this hand? What about this hand? I get emails all the time about right hand technique. We're going to take two songs that I've tabbed at the basic tab for you. Old Joe Clark and Cripple Creek. These are so easy, it's almost silly. And we're going to do some things with those two songs. but. This hand, one of the worst things you can do is you see a player you like, you hear a sound you like in the guitar, and you want to copy every move of that person's hand. What happens is, and I've seen this so many times, the person so, I must have my thumb here, I must, they get so tense that nothing happens good example if um, you got a fly buzzing on your front porch. Try and catch that fly, snatch it out of the air, but do it with your hand real rigid. See how fast you can move worrying about every muscle of your hand. And then watch, watch a kid see the fly going by and snap it out, relaxed. As long as you listen to what dear old dad told you and your hand is in the frailing strum, 
You can keep this finger out, you can keep this finger in. You can have a light touch with your thumb, or you can do what I do and dig in. But do it your way. Because one of the, in today's world, we're so busy trying to push. And the banjo, you don't push, you play it. And that hand motion, as long as you've got that time there, as long as it's bump, dip, T, I'd be happier if you're using your middle finger now. But if you want to use your, your index finger, you can. If you want to use your pinky. A lot of old time players do use their index finger, but that's because they're playing up here. And what happens is, if you, if you look, when you're playing here, you can't hammer hard, even if you have a scoop. So they're playing very lightly, so this finger is actually flicking. So whatever you want to do, do it. This hand, you want to be conscious of the timing, the rhythm. You don't want to be conscious of every motion of the hand. If you're getting a thump with your thumb, it's part of the sound. If you're not, that's part of your sound. It's all about who you are. Be cool with that. And the technique side, the less you think about this, the smoother it gets. All right. If you look in the little folder that came with this, with this CD, or if you bought the VHS version, title over to the website, there's two tabs, and I know, I know, tablature is this, tablature is that. This is very basic stuff. This is just the, the melody and just the pump ditties for Old Joe Clark and Cripple Creek. Now, Old Joe Clark, the melody line, and sing it if you want, because it, it's got really, really weird lyrics, but if you look at the tab, it's just telling you to do this. breaking up the measure. You've got this flat melody line. What can we do with it? Now the first option you have without doing anything fancy is to double up the notes with your thumb. And this isn't double thumbing, but this is a trick that a lot of guys who play fiddle tunes use to fill out the melody line. And that is you just every note So you hit a note, thumb. Doesn't sound like much at this speed, but when you speed it up. <laughs> so you got that. Work on that. Try the song through. It's pretty cool, but it's still kind of like this is the melody and this is how it goes. And you don't have a lot of, hey, here I am. So what do you do? We're gonna break up the measure. And what do we mean by breaking up the measure? You take the same run. Let's throw in some hammer-ons. this out for you. Hammer on, bump ditty, pull off on the third, and throw on that double note while you're at it. If you really want to get exciting, that second part, throw on a slide. Remember we were saying the slides is when you take the string and bring it down? Now on the second string you've got this great note, so it matches your first. Remember how that doubling sounded on the, the first and the fifth string? When you throw that into Old Joe Clark, you get this. I know, you're sitting there looking at the computer screen or your TV screen going, 
slow it down. You've got the same run. Same thing. So that takes this very straightforward little fiddle tune, and all of a sudden, if you work on it a little bit, you've got all these great sounds, all these things you can throw in, pop, power, make it sound like your voice. Now the other tune here is Cripple Creek, and that's just telling you to do this. works. If you never change a thing, it's still a great little tune to play. This makes you happy. But we're banjo players. We want to do something scary, something different. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we do is we don't just hit the note. We go into the note. We play the changes. Mojo Stu, a good buddy of ours, who did a slide video for Funky Seagull, made a really great comment that we always fight change but we're musicians, we get to play the changes. It makes things so much more interesting. So slide into that first note. And it's, there's nothing to it. But ba the whole the thing dear old dad showed you, the slide, is do it in the first string. You don't matter where you start. Because you're not getting, it's not like a guitar where you have this long tone that hangs over you. The banjo is a very short tone. You hit the note and it's gone. So when you slide it in, now the B part for Cripple Creek really is dull. So what, do you, what can you do with it? Well, what if you just played a slide all through the measure? Instead of sliding, well, what about a bend? Did we cover bends yet? What a bend is, is when you hit a note and you take your hand, isn't that cool? Very bluesy. So you can throw, instead of a slide, you can throw a bend in there. gives it even more of a vocal thing. You can really use that in other tunes to give that rare kind of sound. And what we're trying to do with Old Joe Clark and Cripple Creek is so that slide still works the same. You can make these tunes your own. And we're going to go out of this workshop the last piece of the pie here. You've got the basic idea of how to add these notes. If you take any tab or any basic tune, you've bottom cabbage down, you can turn it into a three ring circus. Like this. You take, remember we were talking about bottom cabbage down? Well, everything you do in the first string, since they're tuned the same, you can do on the fourth. So if you have that melody line, you're talking about adding the pull offs. Out of the fourth. All of these great sounds are at your disposal. You can take any basic tune and make it yours because this is your music. When you play a song, the instant you're playing that song never comes back. You can record it if you want, but you still can't capture what you felt in that moment. This is the, a very short-lived medium. person hears it, it's gone. Use these notes. Never play anything the same way twice. Use the notes and how you feel and add accents. If you're feeling sad, add a lot of bends. Make it bluesy. If you're feeling happy, add a lot of 
bounce because you can't help yourself. All these great things are as a palette, like a painter uses to paint a beautiful picture of right here and now. And they've got all these tricks here. Last little trick for this hand. You want to be unconsciously playing but at the same time comfortable enough with the spraling strum that when you want to play hard or if you want to play light and you've got this range from your bridge to about here where you can play. All right? Sometimes I'll throw in a couple I'll strum right all the way up here. Like I'm ending a song throw that in there. Just Nice. It doesn't sound that great, but the person in the audience goes, wow! After all, this is a, you know, it's a, you're finding out there's not a lot happening here. What the audience perceives. But you can listen to those sounds. And you want to be able to add a little bit of a touch. And this only comes with practice. You want to have this right hand so ingrained that you don't think about it. That if you want, you think, I want a hard note. I want a soft note. All right, we have covered a lot of material in this two hours. Um, there's even more coming after this. There's a jam session you can play along with. There's a lot of things I wanted to go into on this tape, but it's really hard to make that line of where do you stop, because this is my interpretation. Dear Old Dad showed you the basics. The advanced stuff I showed you, it still falls in the basic category, but it's also my interpretation of the basics. You have to find your own way of saying things, your own way of doing things. And to do that, now that you can do this, Play a few songs and add a few notes here and there, get a little bit of that vocal sound we were talking about. The next step for me, after I got that point, the, the actual taking lessons stopped and everything I learned came from jam sessions. Hanging out with great players and making a fool of myself sometimes, but it was always worth it because I always learned something. You can learn from flat picking guitar, finger stall guitar, bluegrass players, and yes, you can play bluegrass. We got a minute here. The bluegrass roll is just another way of doing the same thing the frailing strum does. It's a way of breaking up the notes. So to get that bluegrass sound, it's just a way of listening. And if you hear the melody, I love that D lick. You can jam with anybody. You're not limited to one kind of music, one style of music. What this gives you, this frailing strum, is something that no other musical style has though. Because in the blink of an eye, we can go from Let's say down the road you decide to try finger picking. We can go right into frailing. It all blends in together. The real key after you can get this down, I can't stress this enough. What you learn at home on your front porch is this much of it. The rest of it is going out into the, the big wide world and playing with as many people as you can. Talk to people, sing along with people. If you gotta get your nerves up to go play on a stage somewhere, then take your banjo and go to a nursing home, go to an elementary school, play for people. Music isn't just uh, on the road, we meet a lot of people that are very focused on just playing for themselves. And if it makes them happy, that's cool. But when you play for other people, it adds something. 
you have a great foundation now to explore this music. There's modal tunings. There's all these different things out there. Go out there and get it. One last thing that we didn't cover. This is a capo. In standard G tuning, your, fir your fifth string is tuned to your first string at the fifth fret. Wherever you put the capo, let's say you put it in the second, second fret, you tune your fifth string to that note. So you go two, fret, two frets down. Rather than go into a lot of key chord theory here, what we're going to, I'm going to suggest is that you pick up a capo and start, start messing around with it and start asking yourself, why is it when I have a G chord here, is it an A chord all of a sudden here? And if you look at your chord diagram, you're going to see that your C chord here, you move it down, turns into a D chord. Your F chord turns into a G chord, turns into an A chord. There's a pattern there somewhere, isn't there? I'm not going to lay all the, all the groundwork down for you. I'm going to get you started. Because part of the learning process is exploring it, finding it on your own. There is so much out there, and there's so much fun you can have with this wooden box. And keep in mind, this is a wooden box. Wooden wire. The music comes from these two hands and the two places in between, your heart and your mind. Get out there, start having fun. So get over to the jam session, download the tab if you have to, play along with me and Dad. I hope to meet you on the road sometime. Have fun with the banjo, and God bless.